Well, welcome to the Cinnabar, or should I say welcome back to the Cinnabar. For those of you who follow the channel, you've probably noticed we haven't posted anything for quite a while. And there's a reason for that. I, I just, I took in a lot of guns. I thought I had a second gunsmith hired, so I wanted to have enough guns to keep two guys busy. And well, that didn't work out and the, and the fella didn't show up. So um, I just been working, trying to get caught up and, and uh, get some of these guns out that I've got promised to people. So I just haven't had time to come out and shoot, but you know what they say, uh, all work and no play. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna do an episode today on a, on a pretty special Sharps. Um, I've had people complain that, uh, or ask why I haven't done a Sharps video. And, and it is a little curious, especially considering that my great grandfather who, who brought the uh, family out here west after the war, carried one of these Sharps 1859 double set trigger Berdan models for literally thousands of miles from 61 to 65. And uh, so I've always admired these, these old rifles, but I've just kind of gotten more into to the Western style rifles, uh, lever actions and revolvers. And of course these have a, a lot of Western history as well. So today we're gonna take a, a little different, uh, or gonna look at something a little different than normal here. This is gonna be a, a reproduction sharps and a real heavy hitter. We don't usually shoot a lot of real heavy hitters here on this channel, so this will be kind of fun for me, I hope. Um, but stick around, we've got a, a 5140 we're gonna take a few shots with. Now someday we might get brave enough to shoot this 1859. Surprisingly, for a, a 160 year old rifle, this thing has a pristine bore and uh, would be enjoyable to shoot. But today our focus is this much later made Shiloh Sharps in 5140. This one was made in 18, 1979. Um, you can see a lot of the, a lot of the features are, are very similar between the two rifles, even though they're made 120 years apart. You know, the, the early Sharps really weren't changed much in design from the, the early, um, even pre-1859 models, where they, they had a slant breech to begin with, and then they, they made this more vertical breech. But we go from paper cartridge to brass cartridge here, and the design stays very, very similar. Um, one, one of the big changes here, of course, is that we've got a, a pistol grip stock here. We've got a Lawrence pellet priming system here for the uh, percussion. And of course, we don't need that again when we go to, to brass cartridges. But, um, you know, very, very, very similar design, um, a, a great design. It's kind of withstood the test of time. Now this 5140 is a truly massive cartridge. Here it is compared to a 3030 Winchester. They say that you can load these with smokeless powder to ballistics superior to the 458 Winchester Magnum, which as we all know was designed for large game in Africa. Now in 1884, the buffalo herds were pretty well shot out. Um, I don't know if they thought maybe there were some woolly mammoths still roaming North America, tearing up fences or what they needed this for. But uh, it's, it's really a, an impressive cartridge. Now, I, this gun was sent to me by one of our uh, viewers who has uh, been very supportive of the channel. And I used to think really like me. But after he sent me this one and asked me to shoot it a few times and check it all out before I sent it on to him, I'm, I'm not so sure about that anymore. Now, I'm really excited about this one. I'm, I'm looking forward to shooting it, I think. Um, unfortunately, it's a warm day and I, I couldn't justify putting on a heavy coat here and, and claiming that I was a little chilly. So we're going to shoot this thing with just a thin hickory shirt and, and see how she does. Um, really looking forward to it. Really a, a, a beautiful gun, well made. Um, you know, the, these, these modern Shiloh Sharps are, are really just a fantastic rifle. So let's get set up. We're going to shoot some ballistic gelatin just for fun to start with. And then we'll, we'll see where it's shooting and then we'll, maybe we'll back up a little bit and take a, a longer range shot or two. We're going to have to really um, do some studying up on, on load development and whatnot before we really take some long shots. But I, I'd really like to do that in the future after we kind of get used to things today with this old rifle. So today we're shooting some cartridges that were loaded by Buffalo Arms out of Sandpoint, Idaho. These are a 540 grain bullet, uh, 5, 510 diameter over black powder. Now normally when I shoot off a bench, I, I shoot off of a lead sled. But with something this powerful, um, I'm a little afraid about breaking stocks. Now I'm, I've just finished a, a stock repair, wrist repair on an 1874 Sharps original. And 
these things are, are inletted so much that there just isn't a lot of wood in this wrist. So I would hate to, to uh, break this wrist test fire in this gun for this guy so while I'd I'd really like to put it in a lead sled and let the, the sled take up a lot of the recoil we're gonna have to just shoot it off with some sandbags here today so I guess I can't put it off any longer let's let's uh, fire this old girl up and of course this is a double set trigger Whew. Holy crap! <laughs> That'll set you back. Well, I guess I should have shot into paper first because I didn't anticipate it shooting that low at 15 yards, but it put a furrow in my little bench here and then ricocheted come right up through that block. So we're going to go back and see maybe that uh, ladder sight on the, on the tang is set up a little bit better and, and uh, take another shot. No sense in wasting this block with a shot like that. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna flip this ladder side up here and, and just see how it compares to the rear side. It is quite a little bit higher, although it, it uh, shows going to the right a little bit, so we'll see what how it affects windage. Okay, let's pull this thing out of here. Don't see any any signs of damage. It does strike the primer a little off center, which is a little odd. Okay, let's do this again. Ah. The things we do for our customers. <laughs> This hat's kind of in the way of that sight. Okay, here we go. This kind of has a hair trigger on a set trigger. God almighty. <laughs> I'm going to be feeling that one tomorrow. Now that, my friends, is a serious wound channel. That thing's got to be two inches wide. You wouldn't want to be anywhere near the receiving end of that. Now I've shot these ballistics Shelton with other 50 calibers like 5095 and they bounce around fall off the side of, of the stand but this one just blew it right off of the back side of the stand. And if you look at the uh, that sight that I was using on the tang it, the recoil just pushed it right forward. This thing was impressive on both ends of the rifle. Okay we're back here at about 50 yards now and we're going to put one on paper just so that if we work up the nerve to come back up here and shoot again and try to get it dialed in pretty well, we we'll kind of know where to start from. Now, after that last shot, when we used this, this tang sight, uh, we were still kind of low and to the right. So looking through them, it looks like this rear sight's gonna line up a little bit better. And then I don't have to play around with that front sight trying to adjust windage, because there's no windage elevation on this rear sight. So we'll take a shot with, with this rear sight up and uh, it's, there's no graduations on this so it's kind of a, a little bit of a guessing game. Get our cartridge out here. This time we'll shoot without setting the trigger. Starting to get a little stiff with black powder fouling. Okay, deep breath. <laughs> now 
Now I've never had a flinch in my life, but I can feel myself starting to uh, develop one. A guy wouldn't want to wouldn't want to shoot one of these a whole lot and then go out and go hunting. I can tell you that. Now, of course, we have one more thing we have to do while we're here. We've got to blow up a jug and create some red mist. It, it's what we do. Okay. I think four rounds is going to be just about enough for today. <laughs> now sharps fifty one forty. That will blow the lungs clean outside the human body. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us today. Now, I'm not going to say this was the most enjoyable episode I've made because four rounds out of this rifle was enough for today. But I can check this one off the bucket list now. Now, I hope to have uh, some more consistent episodes coming up here shortly. Um, got a bunch of projects in the shop. I'm racing against time for the next couple of weeks to get them ready to, to take over to the big Winchester show over in Cody. Some of them to put on my table, some of them to sell, um, some of them to deliver. Um, so we've got several of those that we're going to have to bring out here and test fire as well. So after my shoulders had sufficient time to recover, we'll have a few more guns up here and, and make a few more episodes. Some pretty interesting things in the shop right now. So keep an eye out for those episodes. So until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.